the sheriff. Give us the holder. Will all those here assembled for the 196th commencement of Amherst College please be in order. to Mallory Chernin in the chorus. Congratulations. You may be seated. Congratulations to begin to Waysland Christiansen, our honorary marshal for today. She is a member of Amherst class of 1985 and mother of Neil Christiansen, who's graduating today as a member of the class of 2017. Congratulations, Way. And thanks to our sheriff, who came out of retirement to be part of our ceremony today. Thank you. And now will all parents, step-parents, guardians, grandparents, great-grandparents, siblings, spouses, aunts, uncles, friends and supporters, please rise. On behalf of the graduates, we give thanks to those of you who have stood beside and behind them for so many years to make this day possible. Thank you all, and thank you for being here. For those family members who are not able to be here because of visa problems or for other reasons, we hope that the live streaming will work for you. Will the faculty please rise? Thank you for your recognition of the scholars and teachers, the extraordinary scholars and teachers of Amherst College. You can be seated. And please join me in thanking the dedicated and excellent staff of Amherst College with whom I am proud to serve as a colleague and who have made this day possible. Thank you to our staff.
We now honor members of the class of 2017 who have achieved particular distinction in their four years at Amherst. The Obed Finch Slingerland Memorial Prize is awarded by the trustees of Amherst College to a member of the senior class who has shown by determination and accomplishment the greatest appreciation and desire for a college education. And this year's prize will be divided between two students, Vesalat Biranu and Amir Denzel Hall. Please come forward. Please come forward. The Woods Travis Prize, an annual gift in memory of Josiah Woods of Enfield, Massachusetts, and Charles B. Travis of the class of 1864, is awarded for outstanding excellence in culture and faithfulness to duty as a scholar. And this year's prize is awarded to Yen Ni Truong Vu. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce the senior who was chosen by you, the class of 2017, to address you this morning. He is Amir Hall, who graduates today with a major in English. Amir is from Trinidad and Tobago. Amir. Good morning. <laughs> Where do you come from? And how did you arrive? These are two questions that one of my favorite poets, Banu Kapil, asks in her poem, 12 Questions. To help with this question, I'll begin with a story. One evening, when my parents picked me up from school, I got into the back seat of the car and fell asleep promptly among the bags of groceries that they must have bought along the way. When we got home, I was awakened by my mother opening the back doors. It was then that I felt my father's hands slipping underneath me, one cradling my head and the other just underneath my legs. He nestled me in one arm and he took a grocery bag in the other. My baby tired, he asked. I re only, only responded by burrowing my head into his shoulder. I woke up when I felt myself falling onto my bed. Between my barely opened eyes, I could see my father letting the wind unfurl the sheets above me so that they fell on my body without a whisper. Mummy, who's tuning in right now, shout outs. 
was the sole onlooker at my bedroom door. I was 14. <laughs> this is where I come from. My father's arms, my mother's gaze, and the comfort of their sheets. Upon your arrival here in our first year, I'm sure you had some idea of where you came from, yeah? And when I, asked recent grad when I recently asked graduating seniors about where they came from, the answers varied. Some said my mother's womb. Some said Abuja in Nigeria. Well, one, one person did. <laughs> <laughs> Columbia, Maryland, and a public school in Cleveland. These communities we come from were also our means of arrival to the hills of Amherst. We all can think of people from those communities and those schools that have helped us on our trajectory here. Many of those people are sitting behind you today. For one last time, and for the first time for some of us, they are help here to help you pack your clothes, fold your bedding, and begin the next segment of your journey. 10 years down the line when someone asks, where do you come from? Amherst College will be added to the long list of places that you name. You will undoubtedly remember this quad, a Frisbee colonized as it is. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior, the Moose. What happened to Pete? <laughs> the airy lights of Merrill after midnight and the always awkward Val. When someone asks, how did you arrive? Hopefully you will remember the people you met here who helped carry you along the way. Sianna McCall in her speech at Senior Assembly spoke of one of, <laughs> spoke of, one of her favorite professors here, Professor Cobham Sander. And the, mm -hmm, yep. <laughs> and the indelible impact that that professor made on her life. At the end of my first semester here, Professor Cobham Sander invited our class over for dinner. I didn't go because I had struggled that semester and performed poorly in her class, and I was too ashamed. I slept instead of going to her house, and later I received a text from one of the members of the class letting me know that Professor had sent some home-cooked food for me in Tupperware. Four classes and many home-cooked meals later, Professor Sander has been at every corner and every crossroad. And sometimes I think she actually knows my future. And <laughs> is just telling me how to get to it. <laughs> when I think of how I arrived here, I think of faculty and staff members like her who have carried me some of, through some of the most tough experiences that I could have had. I also think of students who carry each other on this campus in significant ways. One notable example was Amherst Uprising, organized by Lerato Tifo, Sanyu Takirambude, and Katiana Dandridge. What began as solidarity began to become a space of vulnerability when people of color began sharing their own experiences with racism here on campus. We listened to each other, and in so doing, we were reminded that Amherst College had a lot of work to do to support its students of color. During that weekend, we began that work. On the third day of Amherst Uprising, I stood in awe in the lobby of the library as groups of folks composing staff, students, and faculty brainstormed what initiatives might help address the needs that we had identified. What amazed me was that we were all there. It, although the movement was student-led, student, it wasn't students against administration, or students against faculty. Each group was there and invested in making the college better. Even then, we were a community carrying each other. In addition to the big things like engaging in on-campus activism, we will also remember the smaller, more tender carryings. Like my first year roommate, Kendall Sims, who always shared his chocolate milk with me. Or well, that one time I didn't pack any of my room until the day before I had to leave the country. Lola Fadulu led a whole group of my closest friends in the effort to pack my room and hence save my life. 
Today we celebrate the friends who put that garbage bin and the bottle of water beside your bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we remember that friend that Facebook messaged you about the homework assignment that was due the next day. Mm -hmm. We remember the friends that ventured into the socials with you against all their better judgment. <laughs> and we remember the friends that brought you Val when Val was too much. Three, three much. <laughs> Did y'all get it? <laughs> and those who sent texts to remind you that you could do it. When my father passed away in the spring of my junior year, this community did not falter. We sent alumni, professors, and staff members, called and emailed to offer their condolences. Many of you graduating seniors also reached out. Naya Mullings was the first person I called. <laughs> Barely awake, she held me in the best ways that she knew. Bessie Burhanu called that evening too and willfully bore my pain with me. George Ward sent an email in which he said, though we are an ocean apart, I am here for you. What George said illustrates a unique truth about that experience for me. The Amherst College community took me through one of the most difficult experiences of my life. Even when I was not physically here, What this shows is the capacity for this community to extend beyond these physical peripheries. After today, we will not be here. We will be miles or even oceans apart. But I am certain that this community will hold you all the way. The folks sitting next to you, in front of you, join the immense crowd sitting behind you in the effort to carry you through this life. On behalf of our class, I would like to thank those people and communities we came from for bringing us to the hills of Amherst. You have made sacrifices, you have scolded us, and you have offered us praise. Those of you here, and those of you who couldn't make it, hashtag mom, thank you. I would also like to thank the people we met here at Amherst College who have carried us through our four years here. I speak of the staff and faculty those who got extra sauce for my rice. Because <laughs> you know I need sauce. <laughs> Those who stayed late in office hours cried with us and sought to teach us. Thank you. And we cannot speak of carrying if we do not speak of the women, especially black queer women in the class, who have done the bulk of the emotional and organizational work that brought us to this place. Thank you. And lastly, I invite us to the class of 2017 to extend our thanks to each other. We have won and lost games, danced and sung, and submitted papers late with each other. Sometimes all in the same day. It's very true. And when someone asks you when you come from, where you come from, know that you came from Amherst College, and that Amherst College has given you this community. These are the people who will stand at your wedding altars and come to your book signings. They will text with you through boring meetings at work. They will attend your future graduations. They will definitely send you memes. <laughs> and they will spoil your children. Like my father, carrying me at 14 years old, you're stuck with them. They will be here for you and we will carry each other through. Thank you.
And now it's my pleasure to announce the Phoebe and Zephaniah Swift Moore Teaching Awards. Each year, Amherst College honors three outstanding high school teachers who have made a difference in the lives of members of the graduating class. These teachers have challenged and inspired our students. They've helped bring them where they are today. They've carried them. As I read your names, I'd like to ask the teachers and their student nominators to rise and be recognized. The first recipient, Daniel Adler, for his work. Daniel, where are you? There's Daniel. Daniel. Daniel Adler is being recognized and celebrated for his work as a geometry, economics, and government teacher at Long Beach Polytechnic High School in Long Beach, California, nominated by Jamie Gracie. Thank you, Jamie, uh, Jamie and Daniel. Congratulations. <laughs> R. Nicole Garda for her work as an English teacher at Ernest McBride Senior High School in Long Beach, California, nominated by Irma Zamora. Please stand and congratulate Nicole Garda. <laughs> and Elisa Murphy, class of 94, biology teacher from the Spence School in New York, Nominated by three of our seniors, Noel Grisanti, Caitlin Merrill, and Olivia Penny. Thank you for all you do. Thank goodness for great teachers. <laughs> I'm delighted to present the Medal for Eminent Service. The medal has been awarded by Amherst College since 1934, and this year's distinction goes to a member of the class of 1988, Catherine Cha. Kathy, would you come forward? <laughs> Kathy, in the 29 years since you graduated from Amherst College, you have achieved success in the field of architecture while consistently giving back to your alma mater as a trustee, class president, reunion chair, campaign volunteer, pathways mentor, and many other volunteer roles. You have been a model of inspiration, effectiveness, and selflessness. Your commitment to education extends to your professional affiliations in architecture and design, and your investment in Amherst has created tremendous opportunity for future generations of students. In honor of your contributions to the college, the profession, and beyond, it is my pleasure to extend to you, on behalf of Amherst College and its Board of Trustees, the Medal for Eminent Service. Congratulations. And it is now my pleasure to confer honorary degrees on behalf of the college. And with these honorary degrees, we recognize people who have brought honor to their professions and public service, including several of our most distinguished alumni, and others who, by the conferral of this degree, become alumni of a special kind of Amherst College. As we send new graduates, that is, you, to serve in the world, we welcome Amherst's honorary graduates who are exemplary in the worlds they have already served. The first recipient is Dr. Stephen Chu. Unfortunately, Dr. Chu is unable to be with us because of a serious bike accident. We want to recognize Stephen Chu's extraordinary accomplishments in science, from fundamental physics to biology and energy, which have advanced research around the world including analysis in laboratories here on the Amherst campus. His efforts as the United States Secretary of Energy, the longest serving secretary and the first scientist to be a cabinet member. 
his efforts to educate those in power about the perils of anthropogenic climate change and his advocacy for renewable energy sources have made him a trailblazer for a new generation of scientific leaders. We commend his ongoing commitment to research and insight on a microscopic scale and to sustainable energy on a global one. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, I confer upon Dr. Stephen Chu the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. We look forward to welcoming Dr. Chu in person in the coming year, and we wish him all the best. Thank you. Our second honorary degree recipient is Professor William Cronin. Bill. At a time when some question the value of the liberal arts, you offer moving and hopeful perspectives on education, and they parallel your groundbreaking work on the human interaction with the natural world, how we depend on ecosystems to sustain our material lives, how we modify the landscapes in which we live and work, and how our ideas of nature shape our relationships with the world around us. Across three decades, your scholarly work has redefined the study of American environmental history. Indeed, many would say that you are the founder of the field of environmental history. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please join me in congratulating William Cronin. Esther Duflo. Esther, we honor and celebrate your many contributions to the field of economics, your guidance in helping governments and aid organizations redefine their practices, and the resulting impact you and your colleagues have had in improving the lives of the poor and addressing poverty around the world. The fearlessness of your creative, data-driven, approach and the interdisciplinary collaborations that you foster are an inspiration to students, to researchers, and to everyone else around the globe. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Thank you for all you do. Join me in congratulating Esther Duflo. <laughs> Janira Castro Negroni. Over 20 years, you have achieved the extraordinary in the world of dance and performance art. With inspired determination and vision, you have created important, nuanced, timely works of art and audience engagement of a novel sort. The richly nuanced projects of your group, Akanari Torsi, are mesmerizing and evocative. You are rightfully recognized for the rigor of your bold, creative collaborations. In youth, you were inspired and molded by women within your own family and then at Amherst. And today, your commitment to mentorship of students within the five colleges serves as a model for new generations of artists. Thank you for all you do. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Arts, 
honoris causa with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please join me in congratulating Jen Yuen. That was from the woman who told me I had mispronounced her name last night. Barrett Rollins, as chief of Barrett, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Dr. Barrett Rollins, as chief scientific officer at Dana Farber, you are fostering a collaborative culture of rigorous inquiry in cancer research. Your work on the Profile Project places you on the cutting edge of understanding the clinical and research impact of precision medicine. As a result, your contributions continue to change outcomes for patients around the world. Through innovative scientific collaborations, you are building meaningful and effective partnerships across disciplines, serving as an example to students and faculty at your own alma mater, Amherst College, and far beyond. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Thank you for all you do, and congratulations to Barrett Rollins. Peter Rubenstein. For half a century, your life's work has embodied what we at Amherst and all who strive to build communities everywhere hope to do. Go far beyond tolerance to respect and dialogue across difference. And you exemplify how that work can happen in some of the most complex conversations. Your passionate commitment to moving communities toward acceptance for difference of faith marks a deep contribution to religious thinking. A life devoted to taking down walls and building understanding is one we deeply honor. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please join me in congratulating Rabbi Peter Rubenstein.
in the Choral Society for that beautiful rendition. Well, class of 2017, congratulations. Let me wait just a moment for, for the rest of the class to get your seats. It's not that easy to find the right chair. Okay. In just a few minutes, in just a little bit, each one of you is going to walk across this stage to receive your diploma. And I have enjoyed signing all 482 of them. It takes a while, and sometimes I forget how to do the two Ds in Biddy and have to do them over. But I really love this part of the ritual. I like to read each of your names. I like to say your name silently to myself. I'm taken by the beauty of the many languages, the many places, and the many cultures from which you arrived here and by who you are as people. And going through one at a time gives me a chance to think about you. Your achievements and distinctions are far too numerous to list. Your greatest achievement, I'm sure, is the learning and growing you've done with one another of the kind that Amir has spoken of so beautifully. Among you, there are a significant number of national scholarship winners. Of the 16 Fulbrights won by Amherst students this year, 12 of you are walking today. You will be doing teaching and research in countries all over the world. Amherst was the only college or university in the United States to have three winners of the coveted Watson Fellowships. And the three of you who received those fellowships will travel widely and study the musical cultures of Muslim-majority communities, Tomal, <laughs> women's experience of motherhood in situations of dislocation and statelessness, Jinjin, <laughs> and masquerade performance in West Africa, Sheila. Among the things I most admire about you is the way you support one another. After senior assembly, a number of faculty members and administrators and staff commented on how loud your applause and also your shout outs were as the senior assembly prizes were announced. You have done a very great deal to build community and build institutions here at Amherst. Again, far too much for me to mention. Two of you, for a few examples, two of you established an organization for first-generation students, and you, 
you did it four years ago when you were first year students. Sophie Delphus and Mika Stewart. Thank you. Yeah. Kim Greenberg and Elizabeth White created the Association of Women in Science Mentoring Program. Yeah. Sam Chen worked to ensure there was programming and space on campus for our military veterans. Thank you, Sam. La Causa's programming across the campus in the five college area has been greatly enhanced by the creativity of Irma Zamora. Jamie Sandel has created what Paul Gallegos calls one of the wonder pockets of talent across the campus. Another, another of those pockets, of course, is in dance. And I am thinking in particular of the SAC, Amherst Dance and Step Group, whose spectacular performances have just celebrated their 15th year at Amherst College. You have carried forward Amherst's longstanding commitment to writing and to the freedom to write and to express yourselves and to take issue, not just with the administration, sometimes also with one another. Two of you started your own radio show on WAMH, Christine and Kristen. There's so many other things to mention and you will have to forgive me for choosing only a few. Ultimate Frisbee, I'm very proud to say, is ranked fourth in the nation heading into this weekend's nationals. Last year's women's ultimate team made it to nationals. During your four years, our athletics teams won 12 NESCAC titles and three national championships in men's soccer, men's tennis, and women's basketball. So many of you have worked so hard to change what needs to be changed at the college, and you've shown that it can ultimately bring people together rather than driving them apart. That work is not yet done, but you have contributed enormously to it. And while you've been doing that, the world has changed in very significant ways. And those changes in the world you enter are economic, technological, social, political, cultural, and they are only going to accelerate with automation driving the speed of change. Automation will increase efficiency and it will bring other gains, no doubt. It will also continue to displace human beings and change the nature of work. You who have been schooled in the liberal arts and in the arts of human friendship will be the ones to help create not only new jobs, but I think a new relationship to work itself. You've talked about that over and over while you've been here, changing the relationship to work, finding moments of stillness, reflecting on what matters. What is the use of your liberal arts education in a world of such uncertainty and change? You know that people have wondered, literally, for hundreds of years, whether the liberal arts will survive and whether they're useful or not. Now they're going to ask whether the liberal arts can survive automation. And the answer is a clear yes. Liberal arts education is the form of education best suited to uncertainty and change. Why? Because it fosters intellectual versatility and it teaches a range of approaches to solving problems. Its purpose has never been to prepare people for a specific job that may well disappear or for a career that could change dramatically. Its purpose is to promote freedom of thought and the disciplined and dogged pursuit of truth. Truth matters. No less visible, thank you. No less visible a businessman than Mark Cuban has added his name to the list of leaders who have embraced the liberal arts. Just two or three days ago, he said, 
I personally think there's going to be a greater demand over the next 10 years for liberal arts majors when asked about finance and programming. He added that automation will produce plenty of data, but can't in itself provide a different view of the data, different perspectives on it. Automation may empty out the human at one level, but it's going to require all of us on another. It will be important, says Mr. Cuban, to have freer thinkers than those trained for specific jobs. And among the majors he cites as being desirable in the next 10 years, English and philosophy. And also the sciences, the social sciences, <laughs> the computer sciences. But as an English major, I felt I had to point out those two. Listen, the creativity he has in mind that he thinks the world of work needs and that the world in general needs is not based in particular majors or disciplines. It's in the liberal arts taken as a whole and in the learning that occurs when human beings from different backgrounds with different perspectives come together face to face and learn from each other. As it happens, this is an experience and a set of skills, listening, coming together, being face to face with one another, that is sorely lacking in our democracy right now. The kinds of exchanges to which you aspire, to which we've aspired here and tried to practice, we don't always practice with perfect success, but they can be a model for public discourse. And so residential liberal arts education has not only economic or even indicatively economic benefits, it has political and ethical ones. The seniors that have spoken on your behalf, Amir today, Tess and Rihanna at Senior Assembly, have all given moving testimony to the importance of our presence to one another and to friendship. Friendship seems to be the theme for you. In your wonderfully humorous ways, you've reminded us of the faculty's high expectations and their scolding, but also of their intense engagement with you and their devotion to you, their friendship. You've all celebrated your relationships with one another as the thing that got you through, not just your academic work, but some of the more difficult experiences that any one of us can have in our lives. It's not possible actually to automate those relationships or the values that you exemplify and describe. Friendship flows from the kinds of humanity that education is meant to foster, and its value is incalculable, completely inefficient, and absolutely essential to individual flourishing and the health of communities. But in order for friendship to operate fully and fruitfully in the public sphere and not just in the private sphere, we have to broaden what we mean by that term. It can't just be about seeking comfort or about gravitating toward those who are familiar to us or with whom we already agree. It has to encompass relationships of respect understanding, and even affection between people who differ. And working together in good faith across those differences towards solutions to the complex problems we face is what we must all redouble our efforts to do. This is a harder form of friendship. It can also be the most rewarding. It's certainly the most necessary right now. The philosopher Hannah Arendt urges us to understand the political importance of friendship. The world we have in common, the public world in common, unlike private friendships, she says, and I quote, remains inhuman in a very literal sense unless it is constantly talked about by human beings. And here's a quote I offered to you on the night after the election. The world is not humane just because it is made by human beings. And it does not become humane 
just because the human voice sounds in it, but only when it has become the object of discourse, and I would add, of honest disagreement. The significance of her point is apparent today in a world of serial monologues, talking heads repeating themselves over and over, and hate-filled rants, a world that is short on talk of partnership for the public good. Our studies in history and philosophy, in literature and politics, in every discipline, have shown that there can be no true civic life, there can be no true public life, and no democracy without friendship in this sense. Many of you have worked hard to ensure that Amherst lives up to its value on friendship as an ideal. The uprising has had many positive effects and many lasting ones, among them a lesson in the importance of listening. It also had the effect of showing how dependent we are on each other to help see what we otherwise simply cannot see or won't see, to understand what we don't yet understand, to appreciate which we have not yet learned to appreciate. Friendship allows us to correct one another without giving offense when it's real friendship. Friends give one another the benefit of the doubt, and we can all learn to be more forgiving. Friendship also observes limits. It doesn't allow us to do or say just anything we want. We know about our friends what might be helpful and what would cause pain. And that knowledge and the use of discretion make it possible to help one another grow, improve, and love. And discretion, not so highly valued these days, is a key to democracy. Friendship requires listening, taking genuine interest, making time, being with one another, simply being with one another when it's hard. It means being open to disagreement, being eager to repair rifts when they occur. We do this with each other every day, everywhere on this campus. In conversation and genuine learning is structured to a very great degree in face-to-face -face conversation. It is structured here, and it is important that we make conversation a laboratory in democratic give and take. I believe in the promise of residential liberal arts education because I know on a private level that friendship makes our lives worth living, but also because we see that the absence of friendship as a public good the full engagement of human beings with one another in the public sphere, in all our diversity, we see that this absence threatens the principles that support democracy. A community that does not know how to practice the arts of friendship, that believes it has nothing in common but division, and nothing to gain from conversation, is not community, and it probably can't be a country either. Rigid divisions and the license to demean and dehumanize people on the so-called other side can eradicate our grounding principles, our sense of shared purpose, our hope of collaboration, and our faith. We need to practice forms of friendship that match the complexity of the world and can address its complex problems. And so it matters that all of you use your heads and your hearts to find a basis for genuine connection, not only with those with whom you're familiar and with whom you agree, but with those who differ. One of today's honorees, William Cronin, has argued that liberal education aspires to nurture the growth of human talent in the service of human freedom. And in his essay entitled, Only Connect, the Goals of Liberal Education, he gives substance to that definition by listing the 10 qualities he most admires in the people who exemplify the values of liberal arts education. I'll give you the first three qualities he most admires in people who exemplify those values. The first one is they listen and they hear. It's as simple as that. 
The second one is they read and they understand. The third one is they can talk with anyone. And it has never been more important that we be able to talk with anyone. I think it's worth declaring, he says, that educated people know how to pay attention to others and to the world around them. They can follow an argument, track logical reasoning, detect illogic, hear the emotions that lie behind the logic and the illogic, and ultimately empathize with the person who is feeling those emotions. All these capacities are indispensable for informed and engaged citizenship. They are far too little in evidence today. The tenth of the ten qualities Cronin lists as those he most admires are the power and the wisdom to connect. And he argues, freedom serves the purpose of connection as much as connection serves the purpose of freedom. Finally, in an argument that seems more controversial today than it did in 1998 when he published his essay, he suggests that liberty is not about thinking or saying or doing whatever we want. It is about exercising our freedom in such a way as to make a difference in the world and make a difference for more than just ourselves. Liberal education, he concludes, is the foundation that allows us to grow beyond ourselves and do this good work. We celebrate you today, your love of learning, your cultivation of friendship, and all that you've contributed to Amherst College. I thank you for those contributions. I hope you'll continue to make your voices heard, that you'll elevate the kinds of conversations you have with one another onto a more public stage, and that the friendships you've made here will sustain you after you leave today. I beg of you, do not yield to hopelessness or despair. The fact that we cannot take for granted the things that we would all probably like to be able to assume, the fact that we are seeing the fragility of human bonds, of democratic processes, and of the earth itself, has to be seen as an opportunity for people like you to provide the change that will help us through. I end, as I always do, with a really short poem by the American poet A.R. Ammons. It's called Salute. May happiness pursue you, catch you often, and should it lose you, be waiting ahead, making a clearing for you. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts, please come forward. <laughs> Ali Fayez, A. Abdul Zahar, <laughs> Mabenteng Desmond Acha. Megan Kathleen Adamo. <laughs> Hamza Ahmed. <laughs> Allison Elizabeth Ahn. <laughs> Daniel D. Ahn. <laughs> Simon Tess Asics. Christopher Lee Albanese, Zaina Amas, Kazoa Aoki, Justin Takia Ayoyama, Anna Moral Upfall, Araceli Aponte. Catherine Adedoyen Aribi. Yeah.
Sandra Sinek Arnaboldi. David Virgentino Atkins. Mehar Singh Baines. Grant Jared Baker. Christopher John Baldy. Margaret Catherine Banks. Daria Barshuk in absentia. Cameron Erickson Bean. Brian John Beatty. Jordan Alec Beckenstein. Annika Martinez Benya. Lauren St. Clair Benjamin. Daniela Juanita Bennett. Alex Anthony Berluti. Thomas Reed Berman. MD Aladdin Bouillon. Frazier Malcolm Watt Bins. Besselot Berhanu. Karen Kelly Blake. Devin Thomas Bame. Anthony Albert Bongiorno IV. Molly Pearl Borden. Amita Bose. Connolly Catherine Bottom. Rachel Doris Boyette. Evan Alden Boynton. Olivia Simone Breyer. Catherine Clark Bress. John Harrison Brody. Clark Marlena Brown. Jawan Tyrick Brown. Rebecca S. Brown. Jordan Angel Cat Browning. Nicole Ann Bryson. Jacqueline Marie Beekler. Alina Michaela Burke. Claire Frances Kegnasola. Thais Calderon. Haley Lyon Cambra. Patrick Curran Lucy Canfield. Anchi Chow in absentia. Madison Rose Carbone. Claire Lyons Carpenter. Lauren Brittany Carter. Sarah Elizabeth Carter. Michael Charles Castigli. Wai Chung Chun. William Parker Chapman. Robert Chen. In absentia, Samuel Joseph Chen. Karthik Suvagan Chetty. Eric Chung. Matthew June Young Choi. 
Alexander Lide Chow. Neil John Christensen. <laughs> Rebecca Hart Chun. Sophie G. A. Chung. Bryce Sambella in absentia. Martha Catherine Kocher. Margaret Rosales Cody. Daniela Claret Colombo. Eric Benson Conklin. Molly Rose Connolly. Kevin Mateo Connors. Felix Herman Contreras Castro. Aaron Arthur Cooper Loeb. Karina Brianne Corbin. Pascual Cortez Monroy Edwards. Diana Mabel Christian. Gonzalo Agustin Crivelli. Christine Ayana Crosdale. Katarina Yvette Cruz Padilla. Sarah Jane Colhane. Brian William Curcio in absentia. Adeline Kathleen Curran. Sophie Austin Curran. Arian Delipi. Marguerite O'Toole Danner. Grayson Saren Deerdorf. Stephanie Danielle DeClue. Ricardo Alejandro De La Torre. Sophie Victoria Delphius. Emera De Los Santos. Anna Isabel Derber. Luca Mate Gervenza. Christopher Mark DeWaley. Alexander Douglas Dick. Jayon Marie Domain. Charlene Dominguez. Allison Hampton Doswell. Meredith King Doswell. Bonnie Temple Drake. Alexander Yost Dreisbach. Andrew John Drinkwater. Larissa Alexandra Duff. Claire Virginia Duncan. Shirley Judith Ducanay. Audrey Marie Duquette. Gabrielle Ajoa Joy Edzi. Uzama Chigosiem Abuchalam. Darian Asani. Kenton Prescott Elliott. 
Adam Blake Ellison. Anna Matilda Epstein. John Henry Erdman III. Denise Escovar. Sergio Espinosa Scatini. Una Francis Evans. Lalade Fadulo. Jesse Michael Feinzilber. Robin Ashley Ann Farley. Alex Farthing. Samuel Jacob Feldman. Sarah Marissa Fellman. See you, Fung, in absentia. Kyle Logan Ferendo, in absentia. Benjamin Zachary Fiedler. <laughs> J. Lee Fields. <laughs> Mariella Firoa Lum. Liam Alexander Fine. Emily Nelson Fitz. Stephanie Z. Flores Ramos. Bronwyn Emily Foreman. Alexandra Elizabeth Foster. Jodine Bethia Francis. Danielle Erin Frige. Rosemary Alice Frey. Henry Graham Frenzel. Teresa Jacqueline Frenzel. Sarah Deli Froman. Miles Owen Gaines. Jose David Galvez. Samuel Grant Getty. David Christopher George. Zaki Garad. Jordan Joseph Giampa. <laughs> Juliana Bess Glasser, in absentia. Issa Alana Goldberg. <laughs> Kevin Greg Craig Goldberg. <laughs> Elizabeth Gonzalez. Rosemary Gonzalez Montuano. Emily Margaret Gore. Savannah Patricia Gornishevich. Nicole Merrill Wilson Fould. Jamie Rose Gracie. Michael, sorry, Paul Michael Grameri. <laughs> Mikhail Devoy Green. In absentia, Yvonne Patricia Green. Kimberly Kate Greenberg. Alexandra Noel Fabish Grisanti. Monique Danielle Grosha. 
Destin Groff. Michael James Matthew Groot. Angelina Ying Guan. Soham Gupta. Matthew Robert Gustafson. Connor Angus Andrews Haley. Amir Denzel Hall. Taylor, Taylor Elizabeth Hollowell. Gregory Hahn. Christina Ann Hansen. Griffin Aaron Harris. Emma Claire Hartman. Hadley Connor Heinrich. Ashlyn Mead Heller. Joshua Hernandez. Angela Esperanza Hernandez Velosa. Kiana Steffi Harold. Hannah Gabriela Herrera. Camille Marie Herzog. Emily Dunbar Hester. Kerry Hiohu. Austin Satung Ho. Christopher McGraw Hodge. Brady E. Holding. Isaiah Lamone Holloway Jr. Lauren Subira Horn. Emily Rose Horwitz. Tamal Mohmud Hussain. Cassandra Hradil. Patricia Wei Huang. Jennifer Amelia Hugh. Bellendrin Ian Hutchinson. Haram Huang. Mohammed Yazir Ibrahim. Kasia Makinda Eiffel. Scarlet Sun M. Candace Nicole Jackson. Raheem Devante Jackson. Douglas Hale Jameson. He shakes Oren Jargal Sehan. Oscar Javid. Elaine John. Joshua Jiang. Jonna Amira Josain. Paul Stephen Johnson Jr. Carlos Allen Johnson Cruz. Natalie Peishang Jones. 
Sean Paul Stephen Jones. Jeremy Michael Jordan. Josias in absentia, Nicholas James Kalfker, Brian Heflin Kane, Samuel Dason Kang, Kelsey E. Kino, David Austin Keith. Stephanie Rachel Kellerman, Nicholas Scott Kelly, Catherine Shipley Kent, Tiffany Alyssa Carr, Caleb Chon Hyung Ki, Matthew Lewis Killian. Andrew Yong Kim, Ah Young Kim, Jennifer Yoon Kim, Kyung Sik Kim, Mindy Min Jung Kim, Minji Kim. Sujay Kim, Barrett Peterson King, Caroline Susanna Kinsley, Jordan Nicholas Klein, in absentia, Gloria Ko, Jocelyn Ha Kong. Samuel Kortner, Rashad Louis Casper, Suraj Kathari, Hannah Schomburg Kruger, Kelly Krugman. Caroline Mary Kuziak. Robert Shuan Quark. Michael George Kwong. Melinda Lee Labriola. Nicholas Jacob Lofke. Kamaria Aisha Thomas Lang. <laughs> David Abraham Gabriel Natan Lander. <laughs> Henry Newborn Landis. <laughs> David Allen Lane. Henry Renee Laney, David Quoke Lee, Austin Colby Lee, Eugene Kewen Lee, Grace J. Lee. Levi Lee, Sol Lee, Terry Lee, Jackson Robert Lanehart, Cara Marie Lembo. 
Brittany Laree Lewis. Jia Ying Liang. Ji Shi Liang. Cosette Ray Leas. Alexis Hope Lagon. Hutomo Jayamaja Limanto. Sydney Lynn. Winnie W. Liu. George Edward Long III. Danae Lopez. Diana Maria Lopez Herrera. Corinne Chandler Lorig. Pierre Alexander DeWint Lowe. Catherine Bowman Loudon. Linda Liu. Stephen Michael Lucy. Victoria Jean Louise. Charles Anthony Mack IV. Jason Allen Mackey. Matthew Chase McCoy. Diego Darrell Magana. Cal Caroline Alexandra Magee in absentia. Yuan Meng in absentia. Brian Manuel Malave. Sayida Maliha. Erica Faith Manley. Jessica Chipo Maposa. Daniel Maricelli Olivari. Alina Nicole Morovitz. Brennan Pierce Marsh Armstrong. Christopher Benners Martin. Emily Angle Maston. Sienna Salome Michael. Sianna, I called you Rihanna, and I apologize forever. <laughs> Paul Edward Houston McLean. <laughs> Catherine Marie McHenry. <laughs> Sean Paul McHugh. <laughs> Raymond Henry Miger. Noelle Veronese Mendoza. Shalini Menon. Dakota Marie Meredith. Alex Leon Markovich. Caitlin Sky Merrill. Josephine Hyde Moore. Noah Jalen Morton. Rock 
Ken Mutadi. Jack Elliott K. Muller. Naya Nicole Masengi Mullings. Sophie, Sophie Jane Mergia. Jacob Stewart Nabatov. Ian James Nanez. Anthony Daniel Sanchez Narag. Daniel Stephen Navas. William McClellan Naylor. Nathan Paul Needham. E. Wynn. Janet Nee Wynn. Maximos Nicholas Nikitas. Laura Kathleen Nordlinger. George Edward Nowatney IV. John David Nurmi. Samantha Tatenda Nuvani. Nancy Jaimana Kaziri. Catherine Rose O'Brien. James Gordon O'Connor. Niyi Abafemi Adawade. Karen Onyekachi Paulus Adidika. Oluwatobi Akintomiwa Oniorison. Andrew David Orozco. Victor Ortiz. Kevin Burns Overlander. Orishmola Awagborie in absentia. Melody Ann Owen. Tiana Jacqueline Palmer Peroner. Philip Ja Peng. Keshav Punt. Austin Sang Park. Crystal Park. Jihong Park. Yun Eunice Park. Amanda Christine Patsis. Reed Thomas Patterson III. Jeremy Paola. Kalea Ruth Payne Alex. Reynaldo Antonio Pena Miranda. Felipe Diesu Pereira de Bayou. Hannah Payette Peterson. Sydney Kramer Peterson. Jacob Fow. Cody Wolf Fun Pulliam. Van Hong Pham. 
Jane Abigail Pierre. Olivia Louise Penny. Daniel Joseph Piscatelli. Stuart Anthony Poplin, Jr. Laura, Laura Portes. Jeffrey John Racy. Kamini Sarah Ramukan. Soraya Ransom. Thomas Bloom Raskin. Jax Cooper Rife. Jamie Catherine Renner. Aaron Caleb Resnick. Andrea Teresa Rijo. Daniel Paul Rivera. Kali Kwaku Kambui Robinson, Jr. Tia Imani Robinson. And Enrique Robles. Gabriela Rodriguez. Sergio Antonio Rodriguez. Hannah Rolls. Christopher Gilbert Roll. Arthur Harold Roski II. Jacqueline Marie Roth. Brian John Alexander Royce. Rebecca Austin Rocher. David Lloyd Ruth. Caitlin Julia Ryan. Emma Dallas Ryan. Samir Subarwal Siddiqui. Valerie V. Salcedo. Jordan Tyran Samuels. Daryl McCraig Sanchez. Hugo Sanchez. William Jameson Sandal. Sarah Levy Schulwolf. Gabriella Page Sullivan. Ismail Sayre. Melissa Ann Sheff. Samuel Alter Patchen Short. Muling C. Samuel Alexander Silver. Kendall Nathan Hughes Sims. Siraj Ahmed Sindhu. Forrest Geronimo Sisk. Mitchell Philip Skiles. Adam Dimitri Smith. Lindy Nicole Smith. 
Sarah Brooke Smith. Navon Q. Song. Rohan Chan Sood. Stephen Patrick Susi. Anthony Joseph Spina. Micah Stewart. Mary Margaret Venditti Stoll. Miles Puiki Tang. Wanjing Shelley Tang. Takutua Donovan Trevor Tafuma. Maria Jose Tarot Palma. Marina Louise Tassi. Yanni Anastasios Thanopoulos. Robert George Toma III. Taylor Lee Thomas. Joshua Peter Thompson. Evelyn Shoshelle Ting. Carice Chepchir Chir Tirop. Amanda Christine Tobin. Megan Elise Tracy. Stefanos Tron. Cody Lane Trambarger. Yenyi Truong Vu. Lauren Elizabeth Tuscula. Simon Ularevich. Ruben Daria Valera Jr. Lena Valley. Caitlin Elisa Vanderberg. Andrew Mark Van Dindy in absentia. Catherine Sanborn Ventry. Lorenzo Antonio Hoppy Viegas. Elaine Valorio. Jake Andrew Vitale. Julia Sarah Pritzker Vlock. Jackson Thomas Volley. Katerina Monique Von Camp. Veronica Veronina. Long Viet Vu. Cameron Allen Wade. Rory, Rory Gilson Walsh. Corey Wang. David Cope Wong. Derek Michael Ward. George Henry Ward. Kristen Alexis Washington. <laughs> Jacob Adams Waskowitz. 
Sydney Rose Watts. Matthew David Weinberg. Rachel Marie Welch. Sarah Flannery Whalen. Hunter Whitaker Morrow. Elizabeth Devlin White. Nicholas Thomas Whedon. Derek Carlson Williams. Andrew James Willis. Samuel Penniman Wolforth. Samuel David Wolanski. Peter Christian Wolverton. Miles Anthony Ronkovich. Henry Wu. Kate Symington Wyeth. Julie Singh Sia. Chi Xia in absentia. Jin Jin Shu. Shang Chen Olivia Shu. Zachary Michael Giannis. Fen Hao Yong. Joy Jiang Yue Yong. Nicole Christina Yang in absentia. Joshua Schwem Young. Amanda Wendy Zalamadea. Irma Jesenia Zamora Fuerte. Juan Manuel Zamudio Jr. Lucas Robinson Zeller. Ruobing Jung. Yuja Jung. Yi Jo. Sarah Elizabeth Zuckerman. Anton Zykov. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts Please rise. President Martin, on behalf of the faculty of Amherst College, it is my pleasure, honor, and privilege to certify that all candidates upon whom the faculty has voted to confer degrees have fulfilled all the requirements for the Bachelor of Arts degree. Well then, <laughs> by, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, I hereby confer upon each and every one of you the degree Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto, and I congratulate you from the bottom of my heart.
And now, and now we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Another speech. No. That was a joke. Um, the audience is invited to join in the singing of the hymn to Amherst, and you'll find the lyrics in your program. Uh, and after the music, I'd like to ask the members of the audience to remain in your places while the trustees, faculty, invited guests, and graduating seniors, graduating class, leave the quadrangle. the sheriff please bring this proceedings to a close the 196th commencement of Amos College is hereby adjourned God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts <laughs> <laughs>